Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. In this video, I'm going to talk about Bitcoin as money and specifically in comparison to altcoins because a lot of people tend to think, well, you know, the code base is the same, therefore it has the same properties. And that couldn't be further from the truth because there's a lot of things that go into making money money. And, uh, and Bitcoin is simply a better money than a lot of these altcoins. And it's not just liquidity or market cap or things like that. It's, it really comes down to decentralization. Now, if you've heard me talk before, you know that uh, uh, the way I define decentralization is, uh, is there a single point of failure or not? And in Bitcoin, there really isn't. Uh, with everything else, there is. There's a central dev team that uh, forces a hard fork or a foundation that leads it or some uh, ICO peddler that issued the tokens or something like that. Those are all centralized parties. They're single points of failure. They're um, controllable by government regulation or something like that. If, you, if, you, if there's a single point of failure, that's bad because that, that means that somebody can take it over, that it could be co-opted, um, and there are all sorts of consequences to that. Now, in my article, What is Bitcoin Part 2, I, I, I talked about the different um, properties of money, including recognizability, divisibility, portability, securability, um, you know, fungibility and uh, durability. Those are the six properties of money that I, I, I laid out. Um, there's three in particular that I want to talk about uh, today with respect to alts because uh, it makes a big difference. And these are all uh, good properties of money to have. And if you don't have it, then it makes it a worse money. So for example, securability is a very useful trait for money to have. If, uh, if no one can sort of take away the money from you that is uh, that that is it's a it's a bare instrument then that makes it a better money because you when you own it you really own it you have true property rights over the item uh, with Bitcoin, it's decentralized and there's no single point of failure. There's no, um, you know, central governing, uh, you know, developer team that says, oh, you can't use it for that. Um, so we're, we're just going to, um, you know, not, not accept this transaction. I think that's, that's exactly what EOS did for, for some reason for a while back. Um, but that's that's exactly what, uh, what Bitcoin does is it has, um, it, it, it doesn't have that central point of failure. So therefore, that means that you have true property rights and it's as secure as you want it to be. If you want to keep it in your brain, you can. If you want to keep it as like five of seven multi-sig, you can um, and so on. Now, other coins, all coins are not as securable, right? Like if you, um, if you think you possess coins, you might not. Um, uh, like, for example, if you were the Dow lawyer that figured out how to get the money out of a particular contract, um, they might roll that back. And that's the prerogative of the central foundation for Ethereum, the developer team. Um, if you are, um, you know, on Bitcoin private or something like that, uh, the developer team might, you know, like, decide to inflate the currency so you don't have the fraction that you thought you did. So it, it's in a way confiscating money from you or at least a fraction of the coins that you had. Um, that's, that's a pretty big deal and that's a pretty big difference. Another one is durability because uh, at least in the physical world, durability just means that you know it lasts longer, um, like a piece of gold will stay a piece of gold it doesn't like really react with anything so it, it's very durable in that way silver tarnishes a little bit um but even like gold flakes off a little bit and so on uh with digital items though it, it's not necessarily that it'll flake off or lose value or suffer from uh some sort of uh, demerge or something like that uh instead what what you have is uh are are is um a policy that says, okay, these coins stay these coins. Um, you, you don't really have that with all coins, right? Like with Bitcoin, you, you have durability because it is an extremely hard protocol to change. It's, uh, it's ossified in that way and it is backwards compatible. Uh, you don't have to upgrade anything to keep your coins. Whereas with every other coin, 
Um, you have uh, a centralized developer team. Um, you have people that are pushing for particular hard forks and so on. You are oftentimes forced to upgrade your software in order to keep your coins. And if you don't upgrade your software, you might lose your coins. You know that that's a very real possibility. Um, uh, you know you you can't access like um, Zcash coins before. Uh, they're hard fork now. You you have to upgrade your software because they they changed a bunch of stuff. That's the sort of thing that you need to uh, think about when when it comes to durability. Who knows what sort of changes might happen in the future if they can do a hard fork now? Um, and that that's something that you have to seriously think about uh, with respect to durability. So a lot of other coins they don't really have good durability. Uh, Bitcoin actually does in a digital sense. Um, and the last one is recognizability. Um, and this is due uh, largely to the hash power that's on the Bitcoin network. So uh, Bitcoin has a lot of hash power. It is the dominant token proof of work wise. And because of that, that means that it is relatively easy to recognize because uh, proof of work is so expensive to counterfeit coins, to try to deceive you into accepting coins that aren't there. It gets very, very expensive to double spend is pretty expensive. Um, whereas on something like Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, um, you know, a lot of these minor tokens that aren't uh, the dominant proof of work, um, you know, you you can, uh, you know, like the block reward on Bitcoin Cash right or Bitcoin ABC right now is like 12 and a half uh, BCH uh, with almost no fees. So 12 and a half, uh, their coins trading at like 110 bucks. It's just rounded to 100 to make it simple. It's probably like 1400 bucks. Um, you know, that's not very much, right? Like you can't transact anything above that and take one confirmation because it takes that little to sort of deceive you. Um, but you know, like their, their big thing is, well, if you, if you have a chain 10 blocks long, then, um, you know, you can't overtake it. Uh, well that, that just centralizes it straight to the dev team and they can, they can do whatever they want and they can counterfeit and change things, uh, the way they see fit. They might not be doing it right now, but you know, like as, as we deepen into crypto winter, uh, you know, people will be, uh, more and more desperate for cash and, you know, they won't, uh, be necessarily so magnanimous as they purported to be, have been. And, you know, they, they might change things around. And and this is the problem with uh, with stuff like this is uh, when you when you hard fork once you you sort of set up the expectation that you can hard fork as many times as you want, um, and that's exactly what uh, BCH ABC did is they hard fork like ten times in the span of like a few days because of their quote unquote hash war with SV. So in a sense, Bitcoin is way more recognizable than Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin ABC, any of these altcoins really, because their their proof of work um, just isn't as uh, as robust as Bitcoin's is. And if you're using proof of stake, that's even worse because that's just a bunch of signatures, and uh, it's much harder to recognize because the validation is so so difficult. Anyway. Um, that's why Bitcoin is a better money than all of these altcoins. Hope that helps you. This song is done.